Hey everyone, welcome back to another Tarkov economy video slash hideout profit making video. Um, for those of you that are returning, this is might some of this might be kind of a rehash, but for those folks that are new, um, want to kind of walk through a little bit of how uh, this process works. Um, I kind of dive through and I pick out the items that you can make the most money with um, in your hideout uh, over time. So not necessarily the biggest profit as in the total value, but I actually take into account how long it takes to make items as well. So that's why you'll see me talk about rubles per hour when referencing which item to make. Um, again, these items are based on uh, non-static prices. Things are moving around a lot, so always double check. Um, I have included my spreadsheet you, so you can see the numbers that I work with. Uh, so you can double check yourself if you want. I stay away from uh, stacking crafted materials. Like I don't make red gunpowder and then take that red gunpowder and make rip ammo. Um, if you're going to make anything, buy the components for it um, with a few exceptions. Uh, and then if you have non-found and raid items, it's a great place to use them up. Versus selling them for a couple thousand rubles to the uh, trader, you can use them up in your hideout to make something that's actually sellable on the flea market. So as usual, the first thing we'll dive into right now is the med station. A uh, pile of meds are still the best thing to make, and they're actually making more money than they were last week. Um, if you can time it right and uh, sell your items when the prices are highest and get them into the 13k range, you're doing super good. You're going to be making roughly about 13k an hour with your components. And this is even taken into account that Augmentin's gotten a little bit more expensive. Um, this is super high right now uh, for Augmentin. Uh, you can get it cheaper, so just keep your eye out. Try to get it for 18, 19, 20,000, and you'll do all right. If this continues up where uh, Therapist is the cheapest one you can buy them, then you're going to see Pile of Meds increase in price even more, more than likely. Salewas are always good. Um, they just take a little bit longer to make money. Right now, they're selling kind of high. You'll see them anywhere from 11 to 13K. If you're selling them for 12,750, that's where that 9K an hour comes from. So obviously if you're selling them for more, you're doing even better. SJ6s are still profitable, but just barely. Uh, these guys are only making right around 6K an hour. Um, and that's if you're selling them at 48K. So when they're cheaper like this, I'd buy them up. If you're using SJ6s, I would make them, uh, sell them at 48K and then buy out everything underneath and then yours will sell. And then lastly, always make your propitols overnight um, if you can. So right now, I don't have all the components. Let's, uh, let's see what we get. We'll buy a pile of meds, and I'll show you what I'm talking about here. So when you go to make these, make sure you've got a used up Golden Star um, and even used up ibuprofens if you can to get them cheaper. I find enough in Raid from uh, Reserve. Um, that's where I get most of these from. So I don't have a problem with ibuprofens, especially um, if I die because they're usually in my Kappa container. But Golden Stars, as you use those up, uh, this is where this makes profitable. If you're just buying them straight up and not doing it, it doesn't. I don't count the cost of Golden Stars in my um, equations for the Propitol. The nutrition unit is still kind of a train wreck. Um, I'm still making sugar for my uh, moonshine crafting. Um, but Aquamarines have actually gotten to a point where you can actually make money with them now. You only make about 2 k an hour with these. Uh, maybe a little more if you can get a higher end on your sale, but that's only if you're using crafted water. If you're buying water, you're not going to make money. Uh, you need water down in the 50 K range, uh, to actually make money with this. So even if you're buying, uh, let's, for example, let's say you buy these two chocolates here at 33,000. See if I even get them. Um, so 34, 34. So 68,000 is our cost on sugar right now. Um, we make that for 68,000 and we sell for, let's say 75,000. You're not going to make any money because the flea market fee right now is over 20%. You know, you're talking 23% if you're selling up here. Uh, so you're 16 to 17 K. So your actual cost, uh, is way over. Um, you know, you're only making 60 K out of this and it costs you 68 K to make it. So sugar, you can't make money on right now. Not till the flea market fee adjusts a little bit. Over at the water collector and the booze generator, um, I'm still running these things. You can sell the water and make a little bit of money, but I use it to make moonshine. Um, and that's simply because I like running my scav case. Now, if you want to run Intel in your scav case, probably doesn't make much sense to make moonshine right now. Um, with crafted water, you're only making about 6K an hour. Uh, so if you don't want to deal with the sugar and all the headache of this, I don't blame you. So the laboratory actually has a lot more options now. 
You can make money with scav backpacks pretty regularly. That's still what I'm making. You run around 10 to 11K an hour. You can make a little bit more if you get lucky and list them high. Uh, but it takes up a lot of inventory space. So if you don't have inventory space, um, you can still make pretty good money making scav junk boxes if you have that unlocked and you're able to make those. You can buy all the components, uh, roll with that, and every 11 hours and 23 minutes, you're going to make... Oh, somewhere around 80 to 90 K. Um, but it's about eight K an hour, which is pretty good. Um, it's not too far behind the backpack. It's a lot less work. You're not cycling backpacks every 55 minutes and stuff them in your inventory. Like I'm doing right now. I try to sell them with like 15 or 16 or whatever I can fit. If you're not into uh, making scav junk boxes or scav backpack, you can make money with ripstop as well as the shampoo, uh, the shaman shampoo, the three M body armors and toilet paper. They'll all net you anywhere from uh, 6.5 to 8.5K an hour. Uh, you can check the spreadsheet out for more specifics. Um, and that's just selling the toilet paper to the vendors. And that's because the flea market fee kind of kills you right now. This might come down after a while, but selling it for the 5280 to therapist when you're buying this for 7000 puts you right in that territory. Mag boxes, they're not making money right now. They're losing money, honestly. Even if you take into account that you're burning fuel in your hideout. But keep an eye on it because I think they're going to start creeping back up as people get tired of making them and aren't making them anymore. Once they get into the 200K uh, each range using uh, the components where they're at now in price, you'll, uh, you'll actually be able to make a little bit of money with those and they'll be on par with some of the other items. Over at the workbench, uh, green gunpowder is back in vogue. It's about the best thing to make with the caveat that you can buy your components from vendors. You have to buy your uh, M67s from Peacekeeper and you have to buy the smoke grenades from proper. If you're not doing that, it doesn't make money. But with those unlocked, you are able to make a hefty profit right around 19K an hour. More if you can bump up and sell your uh, green gunpowder at a little bit higher rate. Second up is going to be rip ammo. Um, it's actually making a pretty good profit right now, and you can actually exceed the green gunpowder if you get your uh, red gunpowder pretty cheap. Wires have gotten super inexpensive, so if you're getting those even cheaper than this, uh, rip ammo might be the way to go. And that's with an assumption price of selling rip ammo for 700 It's a little lower right now, uh, but it moves quite around a bit as the day goes. So if you could sell into the close to 700 that's where you'll get your 18 k an hour. Red gunpowder is still uh, profitable to make, just not as much as it was last week. Um, you might be able to get a bump at a little bit higher if you sell this at above 45 k If you can get her into the 47s and 48s, it starts to compete with green gunpowder again. So you're okay making either one. I kind of bounce back and forth between red and green because if green gets cheaper, then it's cheaper to make the red. And then one red gets cheaper, I just sell the green at a higher price. So they kind of complement each other with items. That's pretty much primarily all I make is red and green gunpowder. And then when I get a bunch of them, I sell them for the higher market rate that I can get. Now for our grouped items, uh, 14 to 16K an hour range um, is SP6, PBM, and AP6.3. So your AP6.3 is there, PBM, did I go past it already? Um, there's your SP6. And then your PBM. This will all net you somewhere between 14 and 16K an hour. So it's that's pretty good. And then for your 10 to 13K an hour, uh, you're at making capacitors. Uh, your AP20 shotgun rounds, which are right there. Um, making wires. And then, which are there with your two cables. And then circuit boards, as usual. Um, the trusty circuit board, which again, if you catch these at the right time, you can actually make quite a bit of money, um, especially if they filter up into this 19,000, they start to be a lot more profitable. And then one last item I want to talk about are the VOG 25s. They were a really good money maker at the end of the wipe last time, and they haven't been great up until now. Um, but you've got to be very careful with your prices. If you can sell these for over 27K, um, which right now they are, but they're very volatile. If you can get them up and sell over 27K, um, and in the 28s, and then keep your costs, your total cost down below 185,000 um, when buying all of your components, uh, you're gonna do really good with these. They're actually more profitable than green gunpowder. So if you get a chance and you see a bunch of these cheap for sale, um, you know, below 18,000, snatch them up. And the fuses, if you're seeing them below the 15,000 mark, snatch them up and then make VOGs and then list them for uh, 28K. And you're gonna make really good money doing that. And you can filter that in between your gunpowders or however you want. 
And lastly, we'll visit the Intel Center. Um, it's pretty much the same as last week. The profit margins have decreased a little bit. Um, you're going to make 108K with graphics cards, roughly 107K with VPXs and about 65K with Intel. I make graphics cards because it's kind of a dual win. I take the graphics card, I throw it in my Bitcoin farm, and then it starts generating money. And then as I raid and I find more graphics cards, eventually I'm going to have non-found and raid. And I'll swap those out with found and raid and then sell the graphics card. And uh, the, over the long haul, that'll be the best way to make money. So that's what I'm doing with graphics cards right now, uh, making them and sticking them in my uh, Bitcoin farm. Uh, you can do whatever you decide to do, though. So, and per request, I'll go over to the spreadsheet here a little bit, kind of explain to you guys what I've got going on. So the tabs I have going right now, basically everything here, this is all the magic, crafting profits, quick prices. I created this so that I have a place uh, to quickly enter in stuff that gets used a lot in the crafting profits. And each one of those is referenced here with these kind of gray accent that these are looking over to that sheet so that I just plug in one number and it populates anything that's used a bunch like red gunpowder or things like that so I'm not constantly going back and typing it in. These quick prices are part of how I check my stuff every day. Um, if I come in here and look at my flea market I have my wish list set up and then I can just quickly uh, cycle through each item and see how they're doing without having to search or link search or do anything like that. It's all right there and available and ready. Um, the everything reference tab is just a future work looking to get basically prices for everything in here as a reference sheet. Uh, it's still a work in progress. So the green highlighted uh, items are kind of special cases like Fierce Hatchling Moonshine here. This is highlighted because it uses crafted water. So this is actually referencing this cell here. Um, and again, that's what uh, these peach colored uh, references are is it's referencing something on this page so you can see where it's referencing something and that's again to save time and money if i come in and type in purified water um, and that's the cost that it's selling it'll automatically populate there so that happens in a couple of places anything in yellow like this is a vendor price if you will so condensed milk sells to the vendor for this and you'll see that i guess i didn't highlight this one so we should probably highlight that one too um that's why I don't have flea market fees because you're selling these directly to the vendor for that price. This isn't exact. It's close. I haven't sold one in a little bit, but that's about what they sell for. And then I just have these to show uh, what's making money and what's not. Um, value per minute, uh, easy sort. And then this rolls into a value per hour on what you're making for profits. These are your component prices. I try to keep them in order of what they show up in the game, but that's not always the case. Um, and they also, uh, if there's like three so for like folders of intelligence needs three thumb drives, I have that built into the equation already. So there's not three lines sorting through it. I have them broken up into each area so you can quickly sort by what you want. Um, right now I have zeros hidden because those are items that are stacked uh, that aren't making money. So kind of the way I do this is I'm building the sheet. I can come in here and I can go to workbench, filter that out. Then I can filter, uh, you know, sort by color, do this and boom. And now we have everything in here, uh, easy to look at, quick to find, and you can tweak prices as you want or go anywhere. All right, well, that wraps up the video. I hope you guys liked it. If so, please hit like. Uh, subscribe for future content if you want to see when these videos come out when I get them released. Um, if you have any questions, hit me up in the comments down below or come say hi on Twitch. I put a link to the spreadsheet down in the description in the comments so you guys can go check that out directly if you want and play around with uh, however you want to do it. I'll update it every week so you guys don't have to if you don't want to. And with that, I'll say see you later. Hope you're having good luck in Tarkov, and thanks for watching the video.